Howdy, y'all. Joe Hills here recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee. And in today's lesson, we're going to learn how to go from a bad web page to a simple website. Everything we're doing today builds directly on our previous two lessons. In lesson one, we created a single file bad web page. And in lesson two, we learned how to copy that web page to your web host server in its web root directory. That way the whole world can enjoy it. What is a website? <gasps> if you wanted to, you could just code a whole bunch of individual and unique bad web pages, upload them to your web host server, and then send folks link to each page directly via social media or email. But a bunch of web pages isn't a website. In the same way that several plastic bags of meats and cheeses isn't a charcuterie board, or several vertebrates with polyhedral dice isn't a D&D &D group. A website has a couple aspects that unify its individual pages into a single experience for a visitor. First, a logical information structure. And second, consistent visual design. <gasps> wow! Both of these sound equally fun! So I'm just gonna work my way down the list starting with logical information structure. Woo! Logical information structure. Woo! I hope you brought your cartography tools because we're about to sketch out a site map. The index.html page we created last lesson will serve as our homepage and will welcome visitors to your site and direct them toward the other information you would like to share. What kind of information would you like to share? Only you know the desires of your heart, but I will share with you those of my own. I'd love to have a website where I feature different projects as I work on them. So I have a couple projects I'm working on right now. A thatched roof hut that sells potatoes and an Art Deco TV studio. I also want my website to include a quick bio about me in case visitors who read about my thatched roof hut go, hey, I want to learn more about that guy. So that brings our site map up to four pages, including the home page. The fastest way to create a page for each of these concepts is to copy my index.html file three times. I'll name the first one potato.html, the second one tv.html, and the third one as bio.html. If we open each page, we can edit the code in the title tags, the headings in the heading tags, and the body text in the paragraph tags to reflect our beautiful imaginings we would like to give to the world. Navigation. Now that we have four pages, we need to create a list of links that will point to each page and add that list to all four pages. Since all of the pages are on the same domain name, we can use URLs that are relative and start each one with a slash rather than the full domain name. What a time savings! Now, we are doing this fairly inefficiently. In our next lesson, when we get into content management systems, they'll handle a lot of this stuff for us. But for right now, yeah, we're hand coding some linked lists and some lists of links. So, between our pages heading and our body text, we'll add that list of links here or here. Much better. And then we'll upload all four pages. Woo! Okay, so now that we have a logical information structure with four pages and they already all share the same visual design, so you're probably wondering. Why do we need a separate heading for consistent visual design? Oh, it's over here. Huh. Right now, we have one website with four separate files for four separate pages. Intuitively, you might think, this is the optimal number of files for a four-page website. But as soon as we make a style change to one page, Say, turning the headings a more readable color, or turning the body text a more readable color, or adding margins on either side of the body text. All of a sudden, we have to make that change four times in four different style blocks in four different files. 
So let's talk about style sheets. Four different files might not sound like a lot now, but what if I want to add more pages for more projects over time or additional biographies of myself? Because if George Washington can have dozens of biographies for himself, maybe I can have at least two or three as a treat. So we could have a dozen pages or dozens of pages. And we want to create one file that stores the style code or CSS for all of those pages. To do that, we are going to create a new folder called styles or a new directory called styles. You can use the words folder and directory interchangeably here. Rabbit hole warning. There's a lot of very specific terms in computing, but some of them end up basically being interchangeable anyway. Files and directories are not the same as each other. Folders and directories are basically the same as each other. Also, in some contexts, directories are files. File systems are weird. So once again, this is a rabbit hole. We could do a whole video just about this. Just folders, directories, you know what I mean. We're moving forward. We're getting this done. Okay. So we're going to take the style code from the top of our index.html file and create a new type of file called a style sheet, which we will save as style.css. And we will upload that in our new styles folder. Then we'll remove the style code in the style tags at the top of all four of our pages and replace it with a linked reference to our style sheet using link tags. This will let the visitor's browser know that anytime it loads one of our HTML pages, it should also download the style sheet for that HTML page and apply those styles to our text or whatever else is in our HTML, right? So there's a few attributes you need to worry about. Attributes and attributes also interchangeable. Although some boots have different sizes. So if you're buying footwear, talk to a professional. Don't just use a online tool that takes a photograph of your foot. Anyway, we will be using the REL attribute to indicate the relationship between our page and the linked file, which in this case is that of a majestic style sheet. And then we'll use the href attribute to set the path and file name for the linked file to slash styles slash style.css. And wowie woo, we have saved our future selves a ton of work. We can apply this methodology to fonts and images and more that we want to host as well. Fonts. The Alphabet subsidiary Google has a bunch of fonts on their servers that you can link directly. And this is a great easy place to get started when you're just messing around, having fun, and you don't want to spend any money. Now, for somebody like me, where I have a business and I can justify spending a little bit of money, but I don't want to pay a monthly fee for my fonts or whatever, uh, go in with a small type foundry, like Nate Pecos's one man foundry, Blambot. That'll get you set up with some things that you could self-host on your server and link using the same link tags that we use for our style sheet. Now, neither Google nor Blambot are sponsors here. These are just two handy resources that I'm going to recommend, and you can find links in the description below. Anyway, anyone who sells you fonts will provide you with specific instructions about how to use them on your site. and. Honestly, if you can link a style sheet, you can follow those instructions. Don't stress out about this. It's pretty easy stuff. So let's go ahead and move on to the most photographic or illustrative of all examples. Images. Over here. Yeah, it was here. When it comes to images, you'll probably want to host quite a few of these. So creating an images folder to host those all in is generally advisable. There are thousands of best practices for making a website, and I am only exposing you guys to a few of the lowest of low-hanging fruit. But believe me, 
creating a separate folder for style sheets, a separate folder for images. These are two best practices that are going to save you a ton of headaches later. I'm not your boss. You can put every file in the server's root directory and link it easily if you really want to. But making these extra directories can serve to make your life easier three years from now when your site is thriving after dozens and dozens and dozens of updates and expansions. So, okay. Let's say that we want to add images to our pages. We'll use the IMG tag for that. This looks a lot like the word image without an A or an E because unfortunately they couldn't afford to buy vowels, but that's okay. In lieu of those vowels, there's a whole slew of attributes available for every tag and IMG is no exception there. Now, the attributes we care about most right now are the SRC or source with no vowels attribute which provides visitors' browsers with the URL it can find the image at. And the alt attribute, which I guess they had an A there. They, they could buy one vowel as a treat. The alt attribute describes the image for screen readers, which is software that reads websites out loud for anyone who might be visually impaired. And so then there's also the height and width attributes which you can set the height to auto and the width probably to 100% for now, at least until we know better. You can set them both to auto. Honestly, these are the sorts of things, once you start going in there and messing around with them, you'll get it pretty quick. You can use percentages, you can use pixels, you can do other stuff. Have fun, go nuts. Don't let me put this whole thing on rails. This can be the part where you thrash wildly is in those height and width attributes. Express your truest self. Okay, anyway, that's its own whole rabbit hole. That's wildly out of scope for today, exactly how to use those to make an aesthetically pleasing website. But trust me, you can. So anyway, here is a photo of me. I can add that to my biography page. We'll upload that here and then add the relevant attributes by typing exaggeratedly to our image tag, like ba 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 and then it'll like fill in there, and wow, we have gone from a single web page to an entire website. That wasn't so hard. Outroduction, out. For some people whose sites only need a few pages and won't be updating those pages regularly, this is really all you need. But for folks who want a blog or to update the information they want to share regularly, I really recommend you return for lesson four, in which we'll cover content management systems like WordPress and whether you should make that jump in complexity in return for ease of updating your site. Now, whether you're using hand coded HTML or WordPress, I recommend you consider our sponsor, Name Hero for your hosting needs. They do both. So if you need hosting or a domain name, please make your purchase using my affiliate link at namehero.com slash Joe. Until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring.